that are brought to the technology. Those of you that have graphing calculators, when you take the test on Monday, you can't use your graphing calculator, okay? Because I could show you how to do this also and you won't be able to have like this decimals calculator. But if you were looking on our first page of our notes on page 27, and I said, which of these trend lines is the best fit? A in the middle, B above it, or C, we would probably choose which one? The best fitting line for that data. A. A. Probably A is our best one. Now, I'm going to be able to show you when we put it in the decimals calculator how you can change the scale as you are looking at things in just a minute. But that next page down in your notes, don't type anything in the decimals calculator. Have it clear so yours was like mine. It says, the trend that shows a relationship between two sets of data most accurately is called our line of best fit. A graphing calculator, and in this case, the Desmos calculator, um, will compute an equation for a line of best fit using a method called linear regression. Those of you that have graphing calculators, I would be happy to share with you. We used to have it in our notes workbook, how to do it on the graphing calculator. But usually you don't use your graphing calculator much till Algebra 2. They teach you how to use everything in Algebra 2 because that's years usually. Um, your junior year is when you're taking your ACT and you get to use a graphing calculator on that. But you can't use like Desmos or something else. So when they talk about this linear regression, so on a graphing calculator you're given what's called the correlation coefficient. That's the R. So R is usually going to be a really strong negative, which is r equals negative 1, so there's no correlation, like this one, r is 0, there's nothing related between our two variables, to it getting stronger, positive. So when we look at that, it says the nearer the r is to 1 or negative 1, the more closely the data clusters around that line of best fit. This one, with an r of 1, is actually, every one of those would be actually on that line. Whereas this one, where it's 0.9, and we're going to see ours is like comes out to be 0.97, negative 0.97 or something like that. It's going to be some of the data points won't go through the line, but many of them will. So it just says that if it's R is 1, that's like a line that has a positive 1 slope. And if R is negative 1, it's going to have a negative 1 slope. This is where hopefully you're all on your Desmos calculator at this point. And you want to click the plus button here. Okay. Now, if you want to save this, you could log in like with Google, and then you could save this. And you are going to fill in the table with this data. So what I would like for you to do is as you look at your calculator, you're going to hit the plus. You should have chose table. Make sure the person sitting next to you has that. And as you start putting in the numbers, notice that as you start, I'm going to put in the 1. Hit enter, and I put 2, and then look what happens. It automatically puts in 3, 4. So if you're going in numeric order, that's really nice. So please make sure that you go up to 5. Go over to your Y and type in the values. Now, it won't do it for the Ys because it's not recognizing. And first off, we aren't saying that this is necessarily linear. These are just data points. Yep, right from your notes on page 28. Okay. So, I want you to click on the minus, and you can now see those points, right? So click that minus a few times so that you can see your points. And, you know, you can move yours so your scale is over here. I want to make sure you understand that you can click on this wrench, okay? So once you put your numbers in, please click on the wrench. When you're doing tonight's homework, you're going to want to change the x-axis to be like from negative 2 up to, I think it's like 40, and you're going to change the y-axis. You can just enter those numbers in. So if I wanted this to be at negative 10, I type in negative 10, and notice how it moved it and said, oh, here's negative 10 as my lowest x. And if I wanted my highest x to not be 65.85, and I wanted it to be 70, I could see that. Now, I don't need it that large, right? Where do I want it? Maybe at my largest y up at 30? 
So if I go to 30, okay, so I probably wouldn't even need it that far. And could I, what does it look like the scale is if I wanted to change the scale? So if I wanted to go from negative 10 up to positive 15, and I wanted to make the step at 2. And if I click on that, you're going to notice this is 2, 4, 6, 8, right? If I don't do that and I just go back to the home screen, it's going to keep that same setting. So you might want to change this back to just saying, um, leaving it at 1 and clicking on that. So just, you can change those. I just want you to be aware of that. So now go down to this equation and on the notes right here, it says type in y1. So when you type y and then you just put a one behind it, it already makes it a subscript. Now it's important that this is y1 and this is y1. If this happens to be y2, you want this to be y sub 2. Does it have an equal sign after that in your notes? No, it has this squiggly, right? Approximately. That's telling the graphing calculator, in this case, um, it's telling your, um, when you are looking at this, it is telling it to make sure you look. And So under your keyboard, you have to go to the ABC and go over right between the, below the B and N. That's where you're going to find that. Okay. So Y1, approximately, make sure your neighbor found it too, okay, under that keyboard. And then I might go back and I'm going to put in M, and you can just type it normal. And then I'm going to put X1. And notice it's already starting to put it in, plus B. So if I am looking at this one, I am now, as I look at this graph, I look at it and I go, oh, all right, this looks like a pretty good line of best fit, doesn't it? Would you agree? Mm -hmm. And you can see the R value. So it is correlating very positively, 0.98. That means almost all of our data points go through the line, which makes sense. This one's really close, this one's off, they're really close. So they are really a strong correlation. M of 2.1, that's our what? What is M? That's our slope. And B of 10.1, yeah, that looks like it's at 10.1, right? So that's how you can kind of check that you are doing these right. Um, and again, you can change that scale today when you are doing your homework, okay? So you are asked right now to look at this data. And we are going to put this in our calculator. So, on your Desmos calculator, you can choose to eliminate this first one, and you can make a new table, keeping that equation, right? And I'm going to go to a table. Oh, but look what happened when I changed my table. It changed it to x2 and y2. So, that means down here, I need to change this to a 2, right? So, if you put a brand new table, please make sure you change it to y sub 2, just by putting the 2, and this one to be x sub 2. And I'm going to go up here, and you are going to type in the latitude is going to be your x, right? So, you're looking at this data. This is your x. Temperature is your y, okay? Okay. So you are going to type that into your computer right now. Add it in. Let's fill in what it told us. So what is your R, your M, and your X, B? Please write in the correlation. Where did I get this? This is right here. The R is negative 0.9765. What is the slope? Negative 2.48718. What is the B, the y-intercept? A hundred. So right, all of these came right off of the Desmos calculator. 
Um, you're going to do one by hand because on the tests I make you do it by hand and not using the technology, but you're going to check it with the technology. So what is my equation going to be? Y equals what? 2.487182. Four eight seven one eight, right? I don't know if I would have put that many decimals, but because your technology lets you go to that many places, please write this. You're filling in right on page twenty-eight. It says, "Well, now predict the temperature at fifty." So if I'm predicting the temperature at fifty, and I have that equation, I'm going to write y equals, and I'm going to replace x with 50, and I'm trying to find out the temperature y. So I'm going to put negative 2 point, now if I was doing this by hand, I probably would have estimated it to be 2.5, right? If I would have made this graph, I probably would not have it 2.48718, right? But the calculator did that for me. So if I was using this equation, I might put negative 2.48 Seven one eight times fifty, right? And then I'm going to add one hundred and thirty seven point six two three. What am I going to do to find at twenty eight? And it says predict this. And now tell me, is this an extrapolation or interpolation? Is fifty in between any of our data points for our axes? No, extrapolation, right? So you have your calculator up, just put the numbers in it, one of the ones they just calculated, right? Put in this equation, negative 2.48. Again, if I was doing this, I'd probably go negative 2.5 times 50 plus 138, maybe. They're going to get it more exact. Here, y equals, on the test, I'll ask you to do the same thing on Monday. Negative 2.5 times 28 plus 137.623. And the question says, is it an interpolation or an extrapolation? And you're going to see that when we are looking at this, that this one I gave a really exact answer. Same thing here. If I was doing this in your homework tonight, I would be looking more at, like I said, doing negative 2.5 times 50 plus that. I wouldn't need it this precise. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. The last question says, do we think that this is a strong or a weak relationship? The R value was what? Negative 9.7, almost negative, almost negative 1. So strong or weak? Should be very strong. And it's negative. Strong and negative. So. Because you see the next page in your notes is what is on the test, that's what I would like to look at now with you. If you do have a graphing calculator and you wanted to see how to actually do this on the graphing calculator, I can show you. It's pretty cool, but right now we are going to look at what's on your test. So tonight's homework, one, two, and three, what you have to do with questions one, two, and three is you have to... Do them by hand. This is your practice for the test. One, two, three. You're using this. You're plotting this here. You're going to plot it here. You're going to come up with your own equation. When you do this, I need to see the two points you picked. I need to see how you computed the slope, how you found your y-intercept. And then number four is the technology. This one is extra practice. Do this one all with technology. Do this one all with your computer. Okay? I do not need you to do it by hand. I need you to do this one all on your computer so that you can just see. You don't even have to graph it for me. I'll see that you did it on your computer. Or I'll be able to see your equation from there. Okay? But this first one, you actually have to plot this by hand because on the test, you have to plot by hand. You have to draw the nice straight line. You have to come up with your slope and the y-intercept. Number four is just checking this data. Okay. So, what is on the test? So, what is 
So the test that we've decided is going to be on Monday. It is going to be 14 questions. So, when is our test going to be? Monday, January 6th. 12 questions, 64 points. I will be asking you, so if you were writing down the first three questions, this is going to be page one of your test. There will be three questions for 16 points. And I will ask you maybe to make a histogram, right? You need to know that you don't have any spaces in between that. The two-way table, right? So that's when we did that, like with the allowance, no allowance, you know, um, chores, no chores. So that's going back to this is in lesson one. And a box plot, for a box plot, remember this is where you need the five number summary. Okay. So some of the questions could be like an eight point question and I think the other two are four point questions or something like that, or six, okay? The next standard says I can make a scatter plot like you're doing in tonight's homework. I can analyze the trend and make predictions. This is going to be page three of the test. What I'll have you do is you'll make the scatter plot. So you got to make sure that when you make that scatter plot, that you have your labels, right? And I can see your scale. Um, you'll make the scatter plot. You'll put your points, however that happens to be. Then you'll draw a line. So analyze the trend. That means draw a line. When you draw that line, I will then be asking you to give me the equation. When I look at that equation, I want to see the two points you picked on your line. So if you are drawing this line of best fit and you go, you know, I think this is my line of best fit, then you're going to tell me, oh, I would find the slope using these two points. Mrs. Thompson, these are my two points, so I'm going to know because everyone's line is going to be a little different, right? Because you're not going to probably draw the exact same one because it's your line of best fit. So I'll see your two points. You'll find the slope. Then you'll write the equation. Y equals mx plus b. And then the last question will ask you to make a prediction. It'll be like an interpolation or extrapolation. And it'll say, oh, okay, so now if the degrees latitude was 70, what do you think the temperature is going to be? And I'm going to look for you to use your equation just like you had to do here. It'll be just like this, okay? So the last standard. Um, on that one, that is 20 points. So four questions are worth 20 points. And the five questions are worth 28 points. So some of them are eight, some of them are six, kind of depends on those. It says, I can interpret and compare the center and the spread of data. I will not ask you to calculate standard deviation, right? You did, your computer did it on the project, right? You are not going to calculate that by hand. But what I will ask you is this. I am going to tell you, you have two companies. You have company A and you're going to have company B. And I'm going to ask you to compare them. And I'm going to give you standard deviation for both companies, just like in the light bulb project. I'm going to give you the mean, I'm going to give you the median, and I'm going to say, well, which company is better? And I'm going to give you all the data like you had there. One of the things you're going to want to look for is do you have any outliers? And if you do have outliers, the other thing I'm going to want you to look is um, how do you know it's an outlier? So if you have outliers, how do you know? Do you remember what we said? It's way outside. How many standard deviations away? More than 
more than three, right? So an outlier is gonna be more than three standard deviations away. Another thing that I'm gonna ask you is I'm gonna say, this goes back to your notes. I think it's on page 13 and 14. Would you please take a look, 13 and 14 in your notes? Yep, 13, where it talks about what is the mean, median, mode. And then on page 14, 14 talks about when would you use the mean or median or at the bottom of page 14, they also talk about the range and the interquartile range. And my question is going to be something like this. If you are going to use that mean or median, explain. So using these, I'll ask you to explain when is it better to use the mean or when is it better to use To use your median. So when is it better to use the mean or the median, the range or the interquartile range? On page 14 in your notes, there are pros and cons. I would take a look at those. I would read those through before they pass. I would make sure they make sense to you, those pros and cons. Because if they don't make sense to you, then you read through those on page 14. That's what I'm going to be kind of asking you to explain to me, okay? Um, you will have to calculate. You will have to calculate the mean. You will have to calculate the median. That's putting them in order. And you will have to calculate the range. Interquartile range just means when you do this five number summary, up here, I might ask you, well, what's the difference between the third and the first quartile, right? That's what that's looking at. Questions about what's on 